What's up, Pelicans fans? I'm here to talk about why Shaden Sharp is the best pick for the Pelicans at eight. Tune in. That was a cool intro. First time I've ever done that. It's going to be a short video. Uh, there's been a couple mocks already stating that Shaden Sharp is going to be on the board at eight when the Pelicans are about to make their selections. Looks like teams are high on Dyson Daniels. He may go off the board in the top eight. Looks like Ben Matherin might go off the board in the top eight. And if that happens, it's very likely that Shaden Sharp is going to fall to the Pelicans. Now, I think this is the best case scenario. Hear me out. I think there's two very clear reasons why. One, I think he has the potential to be the best player in the class. There's a reason he's already one of the top ranked players in the loaded 2023 draft class. And now that he's in this draft class, I think the Pelicans should do what it takes to figure out what his intel is, what the background is, try to interview every person around him, every person that's coached him, every person that's played with him, get as much information as possible because there are not very many opportunities to bring a person of his skill level, someone who can shoot from all three levels, someone who has that type of athleticism, really good size for the wing position into your organization, especially when you're a playoff team. You have to have the information. And if you don't love the information, you know some team is going to be enamored. There's already reports that OKC has bringing him in for a workout. They are trying to move up from the 12th spot. There's been reports that they've been aggressively trying to move up. They have a million future picks. There are a few future picks that I'm really intrigued by, particularly the ones they hold from Houston. The 2024 Houston pick looks particularly interesting. Now, if the board shakes out in a way where Shaden Sharp is at the board at eight, I think the Pelicans should call it Adam Silver, tell him they're picking him, pick him, watch how the board is falling, keep fielding the calls as they're going on. And if there's someone at 12 that you really, really like, let's say in some world, Ben Matherin falls to 12. Or if you really love Usman Jang, or if you really love Jeremy Sohan, if someone you really, really love is there at 12 and OKC is calling you about Shaden Sharp, Ask them for the Houston 2024 pick. Ask them to take on Garrett Temple or Devontae Graham. Maybe both in terms of creating roster spots for you and cap flexibility that opens up your mid-level exception so you can go out and sign some players or just have room under the tax. Ask them to kick in pick 34. Maybe you swap it with, with pick 41. Do what you can to really, really, really extract as much value as possible because in my eyes either you are hanging on to a player who has a tremendous amount of potential who has no worry about coming in and saving your franchise and can develop at his own pace or you're getting surplus value for a player that maybe you don't love maybe maybe the intel didn't check out for you and you're getting a tremendous amount of future assets and cap flexibility so in my opinion on draft night, as the board is shaking down, there are a few people that I really love. You know, you've heard about my love for Dyson Daniels. You've heard about my love for Keegan Murray. But if those guys are off the board and Shaden Sharp is on the board at eight, I think it should be a no-brainer selection to actually select him and then start fielding the calls. Hope that makes sense for y'all. In my opinion, this is the best approach, and I hope that's how the board shakes out.